and looks like we're live. Welcome to GeekFest episode 3. Uh, today we'll talk about uh, F-Sharp. Uh, we've got uh, Hugh Simpson on the line with us. Uh, you are you there? How are you? Yeah, I'm doing pretty well. Um, good to hear from you. Now, how um, you, you are a uh, F sharp evangelist, if uh, you can say so. Um, uh, give us a little background on your career. So, I've been programming for a number of years, Fani, and uh, probably in around 2008, um, I started hearing a lot about F sharp, and um, people were saying amazing things about it. Um, but it took me a while to get into it, to be honest. And uh, now I do as much of it as I can. Oh, that's cool. Um, so, what's all the fuss about uh, F Sharp now? Why does? Uh, what's all the hype about? Yeah, F Sharp has become quite popular. Um, I'd say many devs have heard of it, uh, even though they might not know uh, what it's all about. Um, it's recently risen from position 46 to position 12 on the TO programming index, and they say it's heading for the top 10. Okay, uh, so, so I know it's popular, uh, but so is C-sharp. What makes it different? Uh, that's a good question. I think many people just regard languages as a sort of a tool in the toolbox, and uh, you can do anything with any language. But the truth is that F-sharp um, is different from C-sharp in that it, it offers you new ways to solve problems, and um, you can be really productive in, in, in F-sharp. Um, so I'd, I'd love to show you that. Yes, I was just about to say I'm a, a real like uh, code monkey, so talk is cheap, show me the code. <laughs> well, I think before I just dive into the F-sharp, um, there are a few things I'd like to say about it. Um, first of all, I'll need to share my, my Visual Studio here. Absolutely. Fire it up. So, F-sharp is simpler than C-sharp. Um, F-sharp has got very few keywords compared to C-sharp. You'll notice a lot fewer braces and brackets in F-sharp. Um, even type annotations, uh, specifying what type particular parameter or variable is, uh, occurs less frequently in F Sharp. So you're going to be typing a lot less, um, and, and every line in F Sharp just seems to count more than in, in C Sharp. So here yeah, we'll get into to F Sharp, into Visual Studio. Sorry, you. I'm not supposed. Uh have you shared your screen? Because I can't really see. Yeah, there we go. There we go. And just go into presentation mode. I must say that's a nifty feature of the productivity tools, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So firstly, to get started coding in, in F Sharp, we don't have to create a whole solution. We can start with just a single file, and we will make it an F# -sharp script file. All right. Then you'll notice uh, that there are two parts to the screen at the moment. There's script1.fsx, which is the script, and beneath it, F# -sharp interactive. This is an interactive environment where we can quickly test out our code. Do sort of rapid prototyping. Anything we type in script in the script, we can quickly execute in F# -sharp Interactive. Okay, just uh, uh, just before you move on, that script FSX file. You simply went file new file there. Yes, I went to file new file, and under the script section, which if you've got Visual Studio 2013. Or 2012 with F# -sharp installed, you should see an F# -sharp script file there, which you can just create. All right, uh, uh, just be move, uh, 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 while we move on, um, just for the viewers out there, you are sharing only your Visual Studio, so we won't be able to see the pop-up screen that, that actually popped up. So that's why I didn't really see anything that uh, came up. Uh, okay, cool, but it's just a file, new file, and then go up under the F# -sharp script file. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. So let's get into some F# -sharp code. Um, enough ceremony. Right, 
So first of all, in, in F sharp, we can just declare a variable, or actually in F sharp, we call it a, a value. And we can say let x equals 5. And that is a valid line of code. Um, just like with C sharp with the var keyword, F sharp here will infer the, the type of x. If I put my mouse over it, you should be seeing here that x is an int. And uh, 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 like I said, uh, uh, unfortunately, we're not able to uh, to see uh, pop-ups and whatnot because I actually think it's focusing on on Visual Studio. But uh, I don't know if we can fix it, maybe. But we yeah, can move on. maybe uh, we can rather share the screen. And, yes. Uh, Should be better. Yes, maybe just zoom a bit in uh, in that uh, script one FSX. There we go. So yes. one should now see that X is an int. There Likewise, I can type a create a value of float, and F sharp will infer that this is a float. All right. So let's do some simple simple um, function maybe to sum two numbers. We can write a function in F-sharp in the same way. Remember, we don't require many keywords. Using the let keyword again, and we can create a sum function. Our parameters for the sum function can be declared without any brackets around them, x and y. And the body of the function, after the equal sign, we can just say x plus y. So that will yeah, infer yet again uh, yeah. x plus y is an int because the first, uh, what do you call it, um, the first type of a plus is, is int. Yeah, the first overload uh, of the plus operator that's found is for ints. And yeah, if we put our, our mouse over it there, you'll see that x is an int. Um, but just looking at the code, it is you know a single line, um, very little ceremony, no type annotations. Um, so yeah, pretty neat, pretty readable. I must say it's it's uh, very very readable, eh? Yeah. So one can use this function if we want to uh, sum two numbers. I also note as a C sharp developer, there's no semicolons back in the TV days. Eh? Yeah, we don't use semicolons uh, often at all in F sharp. They are optional uh, semicolons to to specify line ends except, as I'll show in a moment, in F-Shop Interactive. So let the result equal sum of 4 and 5. And uh, let's execute this, these two lines of code in our F-Shop Interactive. You can do that by selecting them and pressing Alt-Enter. And in F-Shop Interactive, we should they see, first of all, a definition for this, the sum function, that it takes an int followed by another int and returns an integer. And the value of our res is 9. So one can very easily um, evaluate code, whatever it may be, in F -sharp Interactive. OK. Now, uh, earlier you spoke about indentation and uh, not using curly braces. Just uh, talk me through that. Right. So if we had to get to a, maybe a slightly more complicated function than, than the sum function, Let's, let's start by creating um, a type. Maybe just for a person. So there we have a, a very simple type. Sorry, let's just open the system namespace. I see you declaring the first name and surname as a string. Um, back in my C-sharp mind, that is a string first and the property. But in F-sharp, it's almost like, yet again, like VB, uh, whereby you uh, declare the property first and then the, the string. So there's a very good reason for that. And that is that because 
the type annotations are optional. Um, keeping them on the right hand side uh, makes sense because you may or may not type in that string. Um, now they, they're not optional in, in this person type. We do need to specify them but it follows the, on the same style as everywhere else in the code where the type is on the right hand side. So you'll notice there that we have done some indenting in the type and yet again if we had to write a, a function that deals with this type like maybe to print it out and we're just going to pass in the person as a, a parameter like so here we have specified what the type of person is and uh, let's write a simple line of code then to print that out Right, and we'll just put in p.firstname and p.surname and this function will print out the, the text there followed by replacing or doing string interpolation on the first percent s with the first name and the second percent s with the surname. And that is equivalent to the, sorry, that is equivalent to the uh, string dot format tool. Uh, yes, this is string interpolation, which is close to your string that format, uh, where it will actually do a, a, a replace on what is uh, the, the placeholder percent %s, with a slight change where it's actually, because we said percent %s, %s for string, expecting a string, so it, it is statically typed and does static type checking on it. Um, the other notable thing here, of course, is that the body of this function, this print person function, uh, it knows that it's the body by the fact that it is indented. So F sharp is white space significant. The so is it, is, it, is it any white space, or is it just tabs, or is it a certain amount of white space? So in Visual Studio, I pressed a tab, but it interprets that as four white spaces. Um, it's also quite good at telling us when, when white spacing is off and when indentation is off, um, it will give an error and indicate it quite accurately in Visual Studio. So let's run this line of code, or these lines of code. Select them again, Alt-Enter, and we'll see that it shows us in F-Shop Interactive the type of person. And we now have a print person function, which takes a person and returns nothing, as represented by the unit there. But it should print out the, the value that we specified. So let's give it a try. We can type in here in F uh, interactive print person. And the way we can specify person, we can just say first name equals this. And a semicolon to separate the fields. Close the record, and to get the F Shop Interactive to evaluate this line we've just entered, we'll type two semicolons followed by enter, and you'll see there that it prints out person's person name is Fonny Renders, and it shows us the actual return of the function, which was a unit. The function itself returned nothing. It printed uh, printed out the string to the console. All right, if you're just going to take two steps back quickly to that uh, two semicolons uh, that you mentioned there. That's, just, that's equivalent to the go in SQL. And that tells F sharp to go and execute uh, that line. All right. Yeah, those two semicolons followed by the, uh, the enter or return key. All right, I also noticed that um, the first name and the last name is explicitly passed in. Um, it, is it in any order that you pass it in? With the, um, I, I can't really see that it's curly braces or round braces. Right, so let's create a person here in, in the script. We'll just say let p. And we can do this by specifying curly braces and saying first name equals Fani. And if I'm going to put the two entries on separate lines, I don't have to put a semicolon. I'll just indent it. And I can say surname equals renders and 
F# -sharp knows how to interpret or find out which type that is because there's only one type in scope right now that has got a first name and a surname, one record. And if we look at the type of P there, it is a person. I see. Now, if you have a different, uh, if you declare a different type, let's say person two, that has exactly, uh, that has exactly the same uh, properties. What would one do in that, uh, in that instance? So, in that case, you would have to disambiguate them by typing. Um, either you would specify that the value you're creating is of type person. That's one way of doing it. We'll have to just fix our indentation. Um, or we can actually specify in the field names that it's a person dot first name. Oh, and, okay. um, there's something else pretty cool uh, that we can do with with the, the record class in F# -sharp. for instance, if we were to create another person, we can base it um, off the first person by saying that it is P, and let's say we just want to change the surname say to my surname and uh, sorry I missed my equal sign there and now we have a new record which is based off the first and will take on all the, the fields of the first in this case just the first name uh, followed by whichever other fields I specify uh, and it too is a person all right, so it's, it's, it's basically doing a copy. Yes, it's copying over some of the fields. Um, so you can see that most of the syntax is very shorthand. We get a lot of bang for our buck, so to speak. And uh, the focus here is on as little typing as possible, but making the code really legible. You could say that F-sharp has got a very high signal-to-noise to ratio. Uh, for each line of code, it's very expressive with without having to type curly braces and many of the other things that we, we often do in, in languages like C-sharp. Yeah, the exciting stuff. Um, makes me want to uh, get into F-sharp immediately. Is there any like documentation that you can give us or people we can follow on Twitter that we can get more of this um, uh, in our heads? So one of the uh, easiest ways to get into F-sharp um, is to you can go to a, a site called F Sharp for fun and for profit. And if you just look through the archives, one of the earliest posts um, the, the writer there, Scott, wrote was F Sharp in 60 seconds. And uh, he just goes over the syntax and uh, just writing a little bit of code in F Sharp, how to do variables, lists. Uh, another nice place to go where you can actually evaluate your F -sharp in the browser is the try F -sharp .org site and they will take you through an F -sharp tutorial if you go to the create section so did I say create uh, I meant learn if you go to the learn section you can say get started in F -sharp and uh, it will actually guide you through all of uh, a lot of what we've gone through today. So we can start by binding values and what it calls REPLs here is really the F-Sharp Interactive. Um, on the right hand side it's busy loading an F-Sharp Interactive session in the browser and one can evaluate code right there. I also believe that uh, uh, F-Sharp is open source and cross-platform? Yes. Uh, F-Sharp is fully open source on quite a permissive license. You can have F-Sharp by default in Visual Studio. You can also have F-Sharp in an express version of Visual Studio. And uh, on Mono Develop, F-Sharp is supported. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Sorry. OK. Uh, so yeah, F-Sharp uh, is really easy to get your hands on. Um, and one doesn't have to worry about it being too Microsoft-y. Uh, it's got quite wide industry support at this point in time because of its op it being open source. Awesome. Uh, listen, you, thank you very much for, for joining us on GateFest Episode 3. Uh, we hope to have you back uh, very, very quickly to maybe deal with uh, more uh, in-depth um, stuff, more advanced kind of things. But thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you. It's always great to talk about F-Shop.
All right, guys, so there you have it, uh, F-sharp basics. Uh, even myself being a C-sharp guy, I already understand it. I'm going to go back now and, and code F-sharp. So please go uh, uh, follow me on Twitter, Farney Renders, and I'll, I'll post, uh, see if I can get uh, some, some samples from you on our website, farneyrenders.com, and we hope to see you next time. Cheers.